first, my co-host, Paul Hall, author of the Hall Man series and owner of Hall Man Publishing and American May VA. Paul, how are you? And I know you're excited about our guest. Uh, very excited uh, this time. Uh, I want to welcome Paulette Victor Lifton. Um, she is an amazing person, uh, award-winning supervising sound editor, voice uh, director, uh, coach, uh, producer, directors of all sorts of things. So I, I'm really pleased to, to welcome uh, welcome you, Paulette. Thank you. I'm hey, kind Paul. of... I'm kind of the Zoolander of audio. I call myself a slashy. I have so many like things that I do. <laughs> I, I, I love it because this is something to give tips for. So basically I have been doing radio and television for over 15 years, over 20,000 interviews. Yeah, spoke on Clubhouse multiple times, spoke as a speaker. The interesting thing is when I've done voiceover, one voice coach or just tipped me because I was doing it for my clients for their podcast, producing it. Oh, you're terrible. And it's because I don't have that specific, I have a good voice, but I don't have that specific way. She says, I read like a teacher. I want to get your feedback right off of this back. Cause you're, this is in my Facebook group, media giant right now, live and my 700, okay. 800 members. And I will put myself out there. I don't understand why they think that, or is it, could it be just a radio person, personalities, thought process, uh -huh. but when you train people in voiceover and stuff like that as a voice coach, what do you see with, especially if you're a former teacher, when you're reading copy? Well, I'm going to tell you, first of all, need to slow down. You, you, your style is like, you've had like five matcha lattes. <laughs> But that style works pretty well as a number six celebrity podcaster in the world. Huge following. That's yeah, radio sure. and television when you got yeah. six minutes. Yeah, but, but if, if voiceover, about, it's a yeah. totally different story. But if you're asking about a read, um, this is a very typical thing for a lot of actors. They speed. They speed through the copy. That's actually pretty normal. So I think if you're, it depends what you're doing. It's different if you're doing a podcast. And my apologies for the dogs. Oh, I'm going to test this Bye. out right now. I'm going to read a copy of something on my website. Okay. 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 And I'm going to read it and readers and you're going to give me a feedback and I want you to rip me apart now. And then also you could talk to me about specifically, I could care of uh, the radio end problem is when you have seven to 10 minutes versus you have a hundred minutes, right? If you had a 60 minute show, uh, it's a different story, but I'm going to go ahead and read this copy. Let me go pull it up. <laughs> go figure Paul thoughts on this. This is exactly what I love. Interactive shows. Right. And it's always good because then that just shows your ability as a coach, right? If you can go you know, do this. So I'm going to go ahead and read a copy of my bio, the way you just gave me a tip. Okay. All right. This is me. Uh, this is my thing. And oh, great. It's very, uh, let's see how readable it is. Okay. I'm going to find something more readable. Go figure on my website when I'm wanting to read it. I'm like, I don't like this. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Ah, here we go. <clears throat> Welcome to Media Giant Marketing, your comprehensive partner in elevating your branded business to new heights. Led by Neil the Media Giant Haley, our team brings a wealth of experience and innovation to every project, ensuring your unique story and offerings shine in both digital and traditional marketing landscapes. At Media Giant Marketing, we pride ourselves on being more than just a marketing agency. Your debt we're, we were we're your dedicated partners in success. With commitment to excellence and a passion for creativity, we deliver comprehensive marketing solutions designed to propel your brand forward. Well, you just got to see the art of, I would say, corporate narration, because it's a lot of reading aloud. It's a lot of reading copy, and it's something that you keep practicing. So what I heard was in the center, in the middle, you dropped in and you got more relaxed your style started to change, but then you start, then you tripped over a few words, which is not a big deal, but then you started to feel more relatable to me. So I think part of this is being related, related relatability to your audience. And that's probably the most important thing. You want to include them, not just talk to them. So I just met with a, a really incredible uh, coach yesterday and I'm, I'm learning about public speaking. And so this is like such a great thing to practice for you, Neil, because I think you're, I know you've got these incredible credits and you're so amazing and you're so talented, but it, it doesn't hurt to keep learning. And I, and I, I definitely want to keep learning. That's why I asked you that thing because yeah. someone left me a part about voiceover, but is but, so but did you feel inside of yourself by this middle that you started to feel more relaxed. 
it depended on reading the copy. I probably have to do it four to five times. Uh, uh, and, and I would know based on voice inflections, but I would read this and I read it slowly, but she was saying I was reading it in a teacher voice and you don't read as a teacher voice. You have the other inflections throughout. It varies on the person and what the copy is and different things like that. I think, uh, I think it's what the copy means to you. So, it, and I heard you give meaning to certain words. And I think it has to come. I think everything has to come from a place in your heart. That's just my opinion. And, and when Paul will see when I just laid out and I'm not doing a script and I'm having a conversation and tell stories, I'm the very best. And that's where I get going, where I ask the right question, have a conversation. But the problem is time is the essence in these situations. So you just showed us what you do. So when you go on a podcast, here's my tip for you. And this just came to me. Ask them to try to pr try to show your what you do. Because when they see what you do on it, listening in a podcast, people are more likely to hire you. Well, I think that's true. I think that's true. I, I think I mean, I've been interviewing people since the beginning of COVID. And I've learned a lot about that myself. And I definitely have a lot more to learn and become better at it. So I think it's a really incredible craft and, I, and hats down and hats off or whatever the word is. Yeah. Hats and off. it's all about the conversation and connection. It's the opening when you have seven to 10 minutes, you just want to roll through it. But I'm going to look at that more often in my in my craft but you're right readability what i just got a tip now i'll ask you the question why are you the person to be a great voice coach what do you think has given you the experience level to say you are that that they sh should hire you well there's so many great coaches out there i have to tell you um i think what makes me unique and special is that I believe in the people I coach and I go way out of my way to help them succeed. I have helped children who stutter. I have helped people in the autistic community. I've helped so many different types of people, um, people who have developed development disabled who want to express themselves more. Not So not just actors and not just people who are professionals. Um, I really love helping people and I love being a part of someone's journey and I get a lot out of it. And this is not about the money for me. And there's a lot of people that that's, that's everything to them. And then adding the other thing you do, do you do your own voice acting for specifically books and stuff, audio books and stuff? Or I, more I am a voice casting director and a, and a voice director. I started in audio from uh, the production side, post-production side. I have two Emmys for animation sound. So I got hired by the Weinstein company when they started their animation arm and they gave me like all their movies and all their dubbing. Sadly, they're gone. <laughs> but I do this globally for all over all countries, um, I'm sorry, for companies all over the world. So any languages like Chinese or Russian or German or Danish, or I take a lot of content and make it into English and hire actors. And that's mainly what I do and also series as well. But I have a school called Voice Masters, the Art of Voice, and we teach about 15 different types of classes and we keep growing. Uh, right now we're looking at adding IP to our roster because with AI on the horizon, right. uh, actors are going to really need to secure themselves in a much stronger capacity in order totally to- are. In order because there's ways of using the, the, the other generation. There's so much things for creators or creators are in trouble. What I would recommend if you are just a, just a creator and not a business owner like yourself, right, is I would focus my attention on learning more of the operations side of the game and more of the production side of the game, because at one point it's going to be AI for most things. You're not going to be able to duplicate a documentary that's about someone's personal life story or, or a story of a podcast, but interviews, different things that are on national radio and things like that, that could be eliminated completely with AI at down I, I, I think a lot of things are going to be eliminated, but I think at the same time, as you just said, um, Neil, which is so important, that is, you know, looking at the operations side and the business side. And luckily I've, I used to own three post facilities. I've been in business for a long time. I, the good thing about getting old is that you can do a lot of things. <laughs> Well, I, I can say I can do, and I'm I'm getting old at 51. So, you know, I have a, a lot of things as well. So that's a good thing. And it's a great thing because we could just pick up and do something else. Like I'm relaunching Total Tutor, one of my other businesses, which was years ago. I'm not going to tutor myself. Maybe I'll do an SAT prep class, but I'm looking more as a philanthropic thing, working with an organization called Save for lower income families that can afford tutoring. So I'm in that gener to get that going but i'll also offer tutoring and give 
tutors back to the one-on-one -on -one tutoring thing that before COVID. So you just never know in these different situations, but you've given me some fantastic tips well, uh, that I'm going to be able to go with. And you'll see that I'm all about the, uh, you never know the kind of conversation it's going to be on when I'm talking to a major celebrity or your, or someone else that owns a business and learning things. We were talking management consulting in the beginning of this hour, and we're going to this. But where's the best place we can find information on you, learn about you, and hire you as a voice coach? Because I'm going to be on the line with one of my clients okay. or a friend of mine who's a pro wrestler that's looking to do voice acting. And so okay. I will talk to him about what I learned from you today. Cause he'll have a voice thing and I might just send it to you and tell me what your feedback is on it. He's okay, a, good. he's a singer and all that. It'd be interesting to see. Cause he wants to get into the voice acting game. All right. Best place. So, okay. So two, two places, voice dash masters.com, or I also have Paulette lifton.com. And then my other company is Oracle sound and voice. So that's for post-production. Uh, I just want to say something before we close though. If you're starting a tutoring thing for helping under, um, you know, people who are struggling, I'd be happy to help in doing like acting for children. So if you ever need, Ooh, okay, okay. I love to That's give, great. I love to help kids. That's a huge thing for me. So anytime I can be of support to you, Neil, you know, please reach out. I'm good. I appreciate that. And I'll be in LA at one point in time. Trust me, I'll be everywhere. I'm going to be, uh, I'm starting my, so just to know my major projects, if you've not checked out my website yet, it's probably not announced yet. I'm making a comeback into professional wrestling at 51. I wrestled full time in the minor leagues for a certain amount of time coming back and then I'm going to have a documentary and I'm looking at funding with Indiegogo right now and other things to recreate the whole process. Just looking at branding the next level. I want to be Hormozy Gary V level. And I know where the next level I'm going. So these tips were fantastic. I appreciate everything. And uh, thanks for stopping by. Sure. You're welcome. Bye, Paul. I didn't even get to talk to you. Yeah. Paul is no, just no, always I, I have, in the I, background. I He's my Ed McMahon. He'll laugh sometimes. You're I, listening I and watching the Neil yeah. Haley Show. We'll be back. <laughs>